Is this video a joke? This has got to be a joke. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Oatsome, and we will be reviewing husband and wife duo Derek Huff and Haley Herbert's What I Eat in a Day. But first, let me talk about my sponsor, Oatsum. So as you guys know, I'm not vegan and I'm not dairy free, but I almost exclusively always have non-dairy milk in my morning lattes and cereal, and I'm always experimenting with new ones to switch it up. So I recently tried this new Oatsum, and I gotta tell you, I am totally hooked. It's super creamy and rich, and they have a barista blend variety that frosts up really, really nice in my lattes. But I like it because it's made with whole grain oats and it's completely plant-based, dairy-free, gluten-free, and nut-free. So it's a good option for those with intolerances and allergies. It's also a more sustainable choice than a lot of other non-dairy milks out there because it requires 80% less water to grow than almonds. They also have a chocolate variety, which I've been putting in my smoothies and cereal to really take breakfast up a notch. So if you want to give this Oatsum a try, you can check out the video description for the link. But before we get into this, feel free to pause the screen or look at my description for a quick disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with previous or current disordered eating tendencies that there will be a lot of explicit diet talk in this review. So feel free to skip this video if it doesn't feel supportive to your journey. Also a quick reminder to ring that little bell and subscribe so that you never miss out on an episode. Alrighty folks, let's do this. We eat this routinely. So. It is very true. So much so that sometimes it gets extremely boring, but it's healthy and it's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's boring. I hate it. I have to choke it down, but it's healthy. So we persevere. I get that everyone's goals are different, but folks, healthy eating shouldn't have to be boring. Actually, feeling bored in your healthy eating routine is probably the best way to burn out and just like throw in the towel. I also have to note that eating the same thing every single day isn't exactly the healthiest option either. I get that if we're short on time or mental energy, having a few go-to staples definitely gives us more bandwidth and breathing room to focus on other things in our lives. But even if the base dish is the same for you know simplicity's sake, we can still switch up the ingredients to ensure that we're getting a wider range of nutrients in our day. So for example, maybe a chicken stir fry can become like a tofu stir fry and peanut butter toast could become avocado toast, etc. Okay, so we start out with lemon water. It's a little bit of like warm lemon water to revitalize and just energize our bodies. Of course you do. Oh God. Does nobody watch my channel? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Revitalize, energize, hypnotize, and mesmerize. It helps with hydration too, so we're always getting hydrated. I mean, hydrating, yes, but so is regular water. Drink this first thing in the morning, get your, gets everything going, gets everything moving, and then don't eat anything for the next, for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let everything kind of sink in, absorb your body, rock and roll, alkaline, energize, because the lemon, even though it's acidic, when it goes in your body, it turns alkaline. Uh, do your job, Abby. Just do your job. Oh, come on! All right, so although studies have shown that lemon juice may make the pH of our urine more alkaline, that this does not have any effect on the pH of our blood. In fact, no food has an effect on our blood pH because if it did, we wouldn't have any wellness influencers on Instagram because they would all be dead. So dark. Next. Whoa, what's this? So check this out. So 15 minutes after you drink your warm lemon water, that's what we do, we bust out the celery juice. This um, helps flush out toxins from your liver. Oh God. Another one. Another one. Well, folks. Get out your wellness bullshit bingo cards because it looks like it's gonna fill up quick. No, no, no. Okay, celery juice is a great way to get your water in if you like the taste of celery so much that you feel like an entire cup of that verdant flavor is your definition of a good time. 
But this idea that it helps to flush toxins out of your liver has just got to go. The guy who made this up actually is a psychic, not an actual doctor. And his theory is that celery contains these undissolved cluster salts, which apparently bind to toxins to flush them out. But if you ask someone who actually spends their day consulting, I don't know, like research and science rather than spirit for their medical recommendations, you'll know that nothing about this makes any sense. Bile salts have nothing to do with celery or cluster salts, and there's absolutely nothing magical about celery above any other veg. This is what happens when we use a lot of complicated, scary, medicalized words, put them together in a sentence that sounds eloquent, and convince people to just buy into something rather than understanding it in full. Shut up and take my money! So drink celery juice if you like the taste, but not to flush anything toxic out. Just do it. Honestly, this is the way I think about it. And by the way, we're so LA for doing celery juice. It's so the trend right now. It's like you're drinking like life. You're drinking power. energy. You're like, let's go, let's go, celery juice. Wow. This guy is what I call extra, and is also currently making me really dislike LA. This thing that is called the heavy metal detox. Wild blueberry, bananas, we have orange juice, we have cilantro, then we have barley grass powder, blue spirulina, and Atlantic dulse. Made by Medical Medium to pull out the heavy metal toxins. Really heavy metals being pulled out of my system as we speak. Oh my gosh. People actually follow this guy's advice and they talk about it publicly. Like, my mind, is actually blown. All right, well, if you watched my Goop takedown video right here, you might remember that I specifically reviewed this Goopy Woo cocktail already. Not only is it so elite, exclusive, and inaccessible for most people to be making every single morning, but it honestly sounds pretty gross. So yes, medical medium is right that we don't want a buildup of heavy metals going on in our bodies, but what he left out is that itty bitty detail that you would have to be exposed to a heavy metal in exorbitant amounts over a really long period of time, something that would not likely occur under normal living conditions. I don't know, most of us don't hotbox ourselves in a sauna with drying paint. Now, the only scientific explanation that I could come up with for this guy's ingredients of choice here is that we do know that dietary fiber, like the insoluble variety found in wild blueberries, can aid in heavy metal chelation. And cilantro and spirulina does have some animal research on it as well for the same purpose. But the one human study that I did find found that cilantro was actually no more effective than a placebo in increasing heavy metal excretion. So bottom line, no need to waste expensive wild blueberries in some seaweed and cilantro flavored smoothie. That just to me sounds plain wrong. Next up we have avocado toast. This Yo. is my favorite seasoning. It's everything but the bagel seasoning. Sriracha. Sriracha sauce. So this is mine here. A little bit of drizzle there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and I ate it like that. Is this a joke? This is a joke, right? Please, please, for the love of all that is holy, do not ruin everything bagel avocado toast for me. Ugh, I'm gonna have to stop eating it now because I feel way too douchey having the same breakfast these two ate after having like a metal detox smoothie and celery juice and lemon water. So thank you for ruining something that I loved. How dare you? Well, nutrition wise, I mean, we could use a little bit of protein here especially since the three drinks that preceded this were also pretty low in protein. So you could puree some white beans into the avocado, which is actually one of my favorite hacks, or you could throw like a boiled egg on top. But let's see what they're having for lunch. Next we have mason jar salad. We get the chicken, pop it in. Get the chickpeas in there. Oh, tomatoes, there it is. Cucumbers, get a little sprout in there. Pop it in, carrots in there. Wow, some lettuce, good. And there you have it, you got a whole lunch. All right, so this is actually a pretty solid meal. So we've got lots of protein in the chicken and the chickpeas. We've got fiber-rich veggies, and we got some fat in the dressing. Yes, they could add a carb into the mix, but because they got a lot of carbs in their breakfast and their drinks, I would say that this balances everything out pretty well. 
But it's food, it's nutrition, it's fuel. Listen, this is your buy, this is your one vehicle, this is it, this is not a rental, this is bought, sold, this is it. Take care of it. A lot of people think that there are two types of people in this world. People who eat for pleasure and people like this who eat for fuel. I actually think the best place to be is somewhere in the middle and that's really what gentle nutrition is all about. It's not about being militant and only eating foods that are clean, even if it makes you hella bored. And it's not about just eating whatever tastes good to your palate in that moment, even if you know it will make you feel like shit afterwards. It's actually about choosing the foods that feel good to you as an act of self-care, but making sure that the experience is still emotionally satisfying as well. We have dinner. Chicken. Steamed chicken. Broccoli. We baked the broccoli today. Sweet potatoes. Yep. Delicious. We're very clean, but then of course the array of hot sauce. <laughs> Put it on there like that. Who steams chicken breasts? This feels like one of those terrible celebrity diets that you read about in a trashy gossip magazine where the editors literally just reuse the same five stock photos for every single edition. Like, no wonder these two said that they were bored. Sure, a meal like this is definitely healthy and clean and well-balanced. Like, we've got protein, veggies, carbs. Great. But we can definitely up the satisfaction and pleasure factor. Adding a more complex or interesting sauce that's not just hot, like maybe chimichurri or pesto, would definitely take this from fitness competition flavor-free fuel to a more chef-worthy meal, and would also add a source of fat to a dinner that is pretty low fat. Probably afterwards, we might have a nice little uh, snack, like chips and salsa, or popcorn, or red vines, or Twizzlers, or... <laughs> Sour Patch Watermelon. Something terrible. Yes, and this is why eating clean all day often backfires. No, you know what? I've been good. I deserve this. Oh, um. I mean, you can see just in this one comment that the duo's relationship with food is probably a little strained. So dragging yourself through celery juice and steamed chicken breast all day is usually a setup for an overwhelming desire to eat red vines and chips and other terrible foods, as they say, when you're tired at the end of the day and ultimately your willpower starts to run dry. Rather, had they allowed themselves some variety and flavor and pleasure in their daily meal routine, they might not need to pine over the red vines like this. They wouldn't feel the need to label these foods as terrible because they wouldn't feel so deprived. So what can we say about Derek and Haley's diet? Well, you know what says a lot when Derek himself calls his diet out for being boring? And yeah, I agree, it is. It looks like these two blindly signed up for Goop's weekly newsletter and made their grocery list based on the top 10 hits on Google for clean eats. I know I'm being a little salty, but it's because I actually loved Derek on Dancing with the Stars. And I've actually worked with him on TV before. So I had to do the segment where I had to do this line dance improv style and he didn't even judge me for my really bad, pathetic moves. So honestly, the guy seems super nice. But man, we do not need any more bullshit messengers for that medical medium guy. So for that, I am feeling a little let down. Everything here is healthy. I cannot critique them on that. But there's so much pseudoscience and moralizing of food going on. Ugh, I just can't. Also, based on my crude calculations, this is nowhere near enough calories for a competitive dancer like Derek. We're looking at like 1500 calories here, which is not even enough for his beautiful wife if she were to be doing pretty much no activity, never mind a very active young man. So I would love to see some more bulk to his meals or a few extra snacks in there to just help him meet his high nutrient needs. There is more than enough caloric room for some flavorful sauces, marinades, or fun foods, which would make sticking to both of their wellness and performance goals a lot easier in the long run. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with who you want to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye!